Our pronouns are told you so. The Daily Mojo. So I was talking with Jerry Reynolds recently. It was on my birthday, as a matter of fact. We were talking about EVs and Hertz, a rental car place, and how EVs are making Hertz really hurt. Yeah, they uh, they initially stepped up and said they were going to buy 100,000 Teslas. And they mm-hmm. started fulfilling those orders. And then they found out that people did not want to rent electric cars. And they had already... Right placed an order with Polestar, another EV automaker. And so they stopped all the orders and now they're selling 20,000 of the rental cars that they had for literally pennies on the dollar, just to liquidate. They took a $250 million charge uh, to get out of the electric cars that they bought. And just last week, the CEO uh, stepped down and there's a new CEO. Imagine that. Wow. Did they force him out or did he decide, you know, much like the ERCOT board, that he was going to hit the pavement? And no, I, don't think there's, I don't think there's any question he was forced out. Uh, okay. He made some poor decisions. He got caught up in this electric car thing that so many got up with, except Toyota. Toyota was the lone company that stood up and said, you know what? We don't think this is the right thing to do. We're going to sink all of our technology money into hybrids. And guess what? Absolutely correct. They make sense. You you come home. You don't have to plug them in when you get home. You don't have to have the uh, your electrical panel upgraded to the tune of what is it usually like six grand? Yeah. If you get a, sometimes. a, a, a full EV. Yeah, it's, I've got, it's insane. I had to uh, get an electric charger at my house because I was reviewing so many electric cars. But range anxiety is real. I have been on the side of the road in the dead of winter when my electric car ran out of juice, even though it told me I had eight more miles to go. I was on the side of the road. When when you get down to that 30 mile or so range, you kind of start to panic. And I can't, the reason I bought the charger I can't tell you how much time I wasted at public chargers waiting to get the car filled up. So, you you know, you go somewhere and and it's a quote unquote fast charger and Mm -hmm. you go and somebody else is already charging their car. So you got to wait on them to get through and then you have to charge your car, which could take 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And so you just sit there. I mean, it's, they they went, this administration went way too deep, way too fast in pushing this agenda. Finally, they're backing off some. Of course, it's an election. Day. Right. Yeah. 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 It'll, whatever happens in November, which is, uh, to put it mildly, no, nobody knows what the hell will happen in, in November. No. Uh, but... If uh, if it doesn't go the right way, they're going to ramp the EV stuff right back up again. And it, it's it is such a giant fuster cluck that it, it, it anybody with two brain cells to rub together can see we don't have the infrastructure to deal with, you know, full on EVs. It's just not there. No, it's not. And, you know, people want. 350 to 400 miles of range with an electric car. Mm-hmm. They don't want to deal with 200 or less. And when you see, when you see these electric car ranges, you got to, you got to figure it's, it's an estimate and it's kind of like EPA fuel economy ratings where your actual mileage right. may vary. And mm-hmm. I have not yet. And I've reviewed 30, 40 electric cars, had them for a week at a time. Uh, and I have not yet had one that would get the range that they said it would. There's too many factors. When they test the range, they do it in perfect conditions. They do it without any air conditioning, without any headlights, without any radios on, nothing. So it's a snow job to say, a car gets 300 miles of range, your actual range could easily be 250 or less. Jeez. And 
there, uh, I know that the administration came out within the past couple of weeks and is trying to force down uh, some truly unrealistic uh, average mile per gallon uh, numbers. Is it on the whole industry or is it just in California? I can't remember what exactly that, uh, what, what it was that I heard uh, designed again to push the EV market. No, it's, what, it what is, it's the whole industry. I mean, and the whole industry follows suit with California. California was grandfathered years ago before the EPA came along and the EPA adopted a stance of, okay, we're going to go with what California wants. And I don't think the right. EPA probably ever envisioned, you know, what California actually does want, but that aside, uh, right. they just came out and they relaxed some of the EPA rules. They required 30%, I'm sorry, uh, they required that electric cars by 2030 would be prevalent. In other words, more mm -hmm. cars on the road that were electric than gas by 2030. And they've backed off of that just this week, as a matter of fact. Uh, I've studied it. Uh, they think more like 30 to 35 percent of the, the cars on the road by 2032 will be electric. But the truth is that goal is not achievable either. And they'll have to they'll have to amend it again. And as you said, depending on what happens in November, all this could be out the window. Right, right. And the EPA. The Environmental Protection Agency, again, it's, it's another three-letter government agency that, why do they exist to begin with? That's a whole other story. But they have been, um, the, the whole mile per gallon thing overall is a, is a snow job, is it not? Is it, because don't the manufacturers figure in their fleet vehicles with, they average everything out? How, does the, how do they come up with the, uh, the MPG? Well, the first uh, thing how people, are they kind of lying to us? First thing people need to know, Brad, is the EPA does no checking whatsoever. They leave it to the auto manufacturers to put the numbers out there. You'll see them on the window sticker mm -hmm. of every car. The manufacturers yep. do that. You see a problem right. there potentially? I, uh, yeah, kind of. Volkswagen <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and <laughs> and others. Uh, some great car companies have, have faced some really big fines over this. But, you know, they, they let the, the car companies police themselves. They put the numbers out there uh, to, you know, on what they actually get. Again, they test in perfect conditions. They don't test on a highway. They don't test on a roadway. They test in a laboratory under perfect conditions, ambient temperatures, Nothing on the car. Very, very slow startups and very gradual stops. Not the way people actually drive. So you really have to, when you look at EPA ratings, you have to look at them with a grain of salt. I've, I review very few cars that actually get the stated mileage that they're supposed to get, especially in town. Uh, that's the ones right. in traffic where you're doing stop and go. And they come up with these devices, you know, this, the one that I hate the most, the start-stop systems. So when you go up to a red yes. light and stop, it kills the car. Yep. It, the, I mean, the air conditioner is supposed to continue to run, but I can tell you right now in Texas, when it's over 100, you're going to start sweating if it's a long light. So they come up with yep. all this stuff. And, and it does virtually no good. And that's, that's what the EPA does in a, in, in a nutshell. The, the first, uh, first time I experienced that, we, were, we rented a, a Jeep in Hawaii, and it did that. I did not know what – pulled up to the stop sign, you know, and it, it comes to a full stop, and all of a sudden the engine shuts. I was like, what <laughs> in the hell is going on? Yeah, my <laughs> truck you does take that. Your foot, it's weird, yep. and it can't be good for the engine. There, no, but mine has a button that you can press to tell it not to do that. Right. right. But you have to remember right. to do that when you get in, I think. And you got to do it every good. time you start yes. the car. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I've had people email me and say, oh, my God, my car, i got a problem. I'm going to have to take it back because it dies. 
No, right. that's the start stop that's system. Feature. But wow. I, you know, in my and, cars, they've all got it too. So I'm just in the habit of hitting the start button and then hitting the on off. <laughs> on, yeah. on, the it, deactivate. It becomes, yep. Yeah, it becomes second nature to just do it every time you start the car. But there are there are aftermarket devices out there that you can plug into the OBD2 sensor. Anybody can do it, and it will defeat right. the system. Yeah, and it'll, re it'll remember, remember your last setting. Yeah. Yes, correct. To defeat it. All right, more great videos where that one came from. There, it looks like there's a great video there and a whole playlist over there. I'll wait. Watch and listen at dailymojo.com.